Alison Tandry here with another installment of Alison's Corner Audio Journal. It's May 14, 2024 and today's topic is what I would do if I led the Church of Scientology. Now as I've mentioned in previous installments, the Church really needs some fixing. If they are going to endure even a decade or two more, much less survive long enough to clear the planet, which is their stated goal, some major reform is going to be necessary. And I'm not talking about pretty buildings, and for sure not squirrel tech like they have now. The church tells us they want to free all mankind. The Sea Org's purpose is to get ethics in on this planet. And let's not forget they want to put an end to psychiatry. What started with a book on handling the human mind in 1950 with L. Ron Hubbard's Dianetics has snowballed into an all-out, desperate struggle to reshape the entire world. In other words, these guys have bitten off more than they can chew. And I know it, because I used to be one of those guys, and I felt the same sense of desperation then as they still do now, except they are getting more and more desperate as their membership dwindles. And don't kid yourself, it is. Just ask any staff member who's brave enough to give you an honest answer just how much time and resources are dedicated to member recovery. They'd be leaving ex-members alone if people flocked to their organizations in the amounts they boast. The church do themselves in, in many ways. I'm not going to bore you by listing all of them. I've already mentioned two, but it's important I mention one more before I continue. Dennis, in his Reminisces of Scientology series recordings talks about how staff members are paid. If you are a staff member, and I'm talking about at an organization or mission, not the Sea Org, you aren't entitled to a regular salary. And because of laws that allow religious organizations to get away with such things, you aren't even entitled to minimum wage. You get paid on what's called unit pay. Each staff member is entitled to a certain amount of units. These are shares of what's left over after paying the organization's expenses that's dedicated to paying the staff. At first, this sounds intelligent and fair. If the organization has a good week, you are entitled to a higher amount of pay than you were the previous week when the income wasn't so great. Unit pay motivates everyone to produce more. And just to give the devil his due, I am sure that's probably Ron's original intent. The reality of unit pay is this, because there is no set salary for the staff, and they are only paid with what's left over after expenses, the organization can just go mad hiring more staff than it needs. And to further encourage this unrestrained hiring policy, they actually keep statistics on how many staff members are employed per week. Imagine that. The Church of Scientology keeping a statistic on something so ludicrous. I mean, having a staff member on your payroll is not a product. Staff members are financial liabilities to an organization. What is even more damaging about this mad hiring policy is that they take active, paying public and put them on staff. They stop paying for services, and now the organization is paying them. Anyone who has been involved with Scientology long enough will tell you, if they see your face at the church long enough, they will eventually start pressuring you to join staff, and from there forward it's an ongoing annoyance. The church waters down staff pay by paying them in units and hiring more people than they need. They take paying public and turn them into staff members. And the result? Rotten, low staff pay. So if you ever wondered why the church pressures its members to purchase large packages of training and auditing and have them max out their credit cards, mortgage their houses and ask friends and family for money, it's not necessarily because the church is greedy. It's because their staff members are starving. Think about that before you decide to give someone a hard time for working for the Church of Scientology. It would be better to just offer them some food. I used to when I was involved with the church. None of them ever refused it. Anyway, I don't believe the real intention of the Church of Scientology is to free all mankind. I have another theory about what they are really up to which I will explain in another audio journal entry. I actually don't believe it's something sinister, it's just not the one they are saying, that's all. If I were in charge of the church, I would make the fundamental goal of the organization to establish Scientology auditing as a respectable and effective method of psychotherapy. I personally already know it's effective. 
But because of the antics of the church, its respectability has fallen considerably, at no fault of the technology itself. I'd start with the economics of the organization. I would lay off the majority of the staff members, including Sea Org. I would not shame them. I would not hold them to their contracts in any way, especially not that cruel practice of making a staff member pay for all the training they got, even if it was just training to do their job, if they left staff early. And I would not just throw these people out on the streets. I'd make sure they had places to live, and I would help them find jobs too. That first step alone would reduce the organization's expenses considerably, and once these former staff members got back on their feet, they'd come in and do some services and pay for them. The next thing I would do is take about two-thirds of the floor space of the ideal orgs and rent the offices out to other businesses. With the remaining floor space, I would have a minimal staff of a receptionist, a few auditors, and maybe an admin person if needed. And those people would work day and night just seeing public for their auditing sessions. And I would pay them all well for it. I'd probably keep the celebrity centers the way that they are, for the rich people to go for services undisturbed. Gotta keep John Travolta and Tom Cruise happy, after all, as they are great public relations for the church. They go on and on about how wonderful the current church is, and I'd want them singing that same tune for me too. In addition to converting the high overhead ideal orgs into office buildings that had an auditing center in them, I would have anyone else left over that was auditor trained go to other office buildings in cities that did not have a Scientology organization in them and establish practices there. I might even recruit some of the auditors who left the church after the so-called golden age of tech rendered their certificates invalid. I'd of course give each of them some refresher training, at the church's expense. I believe that once these offices proliferated across the country and the world, Scientology auditing would become a household word. People would be saying, hey, I gotta go. I have to see my Scientology auditor, the same way they would say they had an appointment to see their therapist. I wouldn't even force the issue of whether or not the public these auditing centers were servicing were Scientologists or members of the church. After all, seeing a psychologist doesn't make you a psychologist too, does it? In other words, I wouldn't expect these clientele to identify as Scientologists. The public relations of the church would rapidly improve. No more Sea Org members living four to a room, working 80 or more hours per week with billion-year contracts. No more starving regular staff members. No going to International Association of Scientologist events and being asked for donations in the tens of thousands of dollars. The auditing centers would be viable. Staff would be paid well, and services would not have to cost a great deal of money. Instead of this desperate crusade that's going to eventually fail anyway, I would have an organization that established Scientology as a respectable, effective practice. Having established such, I'd have training centers for the auditors. People would want to become Scientology auditors once they felt safer with this activity that, under my leadership, presents itself more as an effort to help people on an individual level rather than appearing as one that wishes to take over the world. Can you imagine, in a grade school class, the teacher asking a little girl what she wanted to be when she grew up, and her answer would be, I want to be a Scientology auditor? If the church were to reform itself even using half of my suggestions, I believe that would actually happen someday. I'm Allison Tandry and you are listening to the Allison's Corner Audio Journal on YouTube. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.